Well, welcome back, wonderful humans. It's been a minute, as the young folks say. In case you forgot, my name is Anthony. My name is Eric. And we're the Board Game Dads, back with another holiday spotlight on our brand new holiday that we created ourselves, Kickstarter Day. <laughs> Kickstarter Day. I'm actually really excited about this Kickstarter Day. I know, I know. Yeah, really? So in case you missed it, we we did this once before. You can check that video out um, from about a month ago, probably. And just as a side note, it is um, finally springtime. So if you want to check out our previous year's spring spotlight, uh, that video is available as well. Uh, I will tell you the video quality is probably a little bit lower than what you're looking at today. So keep that in mind. But the picks are fresh as daisies. I would just like to say that yeah. I've been using the same camera, so my side of the screen will be the mm, same quality. No, no, it will not actually, because we oh. were recording in a lower quality, so it has nothing to do with the camera. Uh, yeah, I don't pay attention. But I digress. I know. I don't bore you with the details. <laughs> Anyway, it's Kickstarter Day, folks, and we have got three of them to talk to you about today. Four uh, of first them. First one, Eric. Actually. Four of them? Four oh, of them. Well, I just that's opened true. one. Yeah. That's true. So I just that's got one true. today. Right. Today is what? Just Thursday? today. Just today. Today is. I've been Thursday, waiting a while for this one. Technically Friday now. I, uh, I think I missed the. I don't know if it was Kickstarter or, or uh, what's the other one? Game Found? I actually don't remember because I yeah I did a late pledge right through something and yeah anyway boom dead reckoning this is a huge box not as big as one of the yeah. games that I'm talking about. that is a I really was going to ask box. you that pretty close though right <laughs> no no two expansions for it. Oh, okay. oh no, De Dead Reckoning is the size of the original Isle of Cats. Ah. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We're talking about Isle of Cats. It's going to be yep. the thumbnail anyway, folks. <laughs> and then uh, this little mini expansion. But yeah, Dead Reckoning, uh, I know it uses uh, Mystic Veil vale style card building. Uh, it's got pirates. Okay. It's got uh, exploration. I think there's some resource management. So it's like this really like in-depth game, which I'm not a big fan of. But it's got a bunch of unique things going for it. And so I backed it. And I don't usually back games that are more than like 60 bucks. And this one with the expansions and everything, I think I dropped like 100 bucks on this. So this is, haven't done that since I believe Seventh Continent and Marvel United X Men. But so you went all in on this one? I went, I, I think so. I don't remember. I backed it, and then uh, I actually got an email the other day that I had something from AEG coming, and I was like, oh, cool, you know, like, and I didn't want to think about what game it could be, because, like, you know, I got a bunch of games from Kickstarter and everything, and I just put it out of my mind, and then, uh, and forgot about it, and then I got an email today from Dead Reckoning, and I was like, oh, that's the game, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, so Spoilers, there goes the everyone. Spoilers. But very excited about this one. Anyway. For the games that we have played and we can talk about, or at least I've played this first one. Uh, yeah, I have I'm, not, but uh, looks looks cool. Yeah, this is this is called Creature Creature Comforts, and it's got cute little creatures. It's uh, designed by Roberta Taylor, and it's a kids' table board gaming game. Which, as I've said uh, in the past, at this point, if they put out a game on Kickstarter and I'm paying attention, I will back it. I might miss something, but I saw this, oh, kids table board game, oh, okay, I'll back it. Oh, it's got cute critters, good. I'm definitely gonna back it. And <laughs> we played it, we loved it. It's a one of five players, plays in about 45 minutes, and that's pretty accurate. Although we only played a two player okay. game, I could imagine you know a five player game taking a little bit more. But you know, these are, these are the stats straight from BGG. Uh, and it plays ages eight and up. And this is a dice rolling worker placement resource management game with, you know, the, the cute little critters and cute little critter meeples. Speaking of the meeples, there's some of them there. 
Yeah, they got it. You know, you got is that, the uh, is that Earthworm Jim in the middle there. It <laughs> looks like Earthworm Jim. So that's what <laughs> me and my really wife does. call it. That's the first player marker. But yeah, that that definitely looks okay. like Earthworm Jim after he's been ripped out of his uh, super suit, and he's in the ground. Uh, so anyway, so this game it, it's got a unique mechanism where, so in the first phase, everybody's going to roll their their two two dice of their color. And, you know, just kind of hold them off to the side. And then they have four workers that they're going to be putting out somewhere. And each spot that you're going to put a worker out at has some sort of specific number that you need to roll. Or you have to have, you know, multiple dice that equal greater than 11. Or you have to have three of the same number. And so you only know what two of your dice are going to be. And you have to put out all four of your workers. And then once all everybody's got their workers out... The, the first player is going to roll four white dice and then everybody's going to use those four white dice on their turn. So the first player goes, puts, you know, the dice moves them where they want to use them and then does their worker actions. And then the next player goes, uses the same dice. And for the most part, there's not much that you can do that's going to affect me. So that's great. You know, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of take that. That's um, right up your alley. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so we, we really, we really enjoyed this when we played it. And, uh, yeah, I, I just, I like that, you know, you, you kind of like, all right, I want to go here, but what if I don't get, you know, a one, you know, I don't have a lot of things that can change stuff. It's not like you're going to have a lot of ways to manipulate the dice. You're basically mm-hmm. going to stick with whatever the four white dice are, and you might be able to manipulate your dice by one or two, because you're going to be getting upgrades, um, which will allow you to do little things here and there, or give you some, some, uh, some powers later on. Uh, and then you can also do you can also buy these cards that you can see on the left side of the board there. The upgrades are on the top. I didn't, I didn't okay. take the picture. <laughs> but then on the left, there's some other cards. And those are basically just going to give you points. Uh, but it's a fun game. I can't wait to play it again. My wife, when we were playing it, she's like, I really like this game. And she doesn't usually oh, say great. that mid-game or like towards the end of the game. Yeah. Ever. So like, that, that's, definitely, that's definitely a bonus. It looks it looks cool. The board looks awesome. Uh, yeah, the meeples, I mean, the, like you said, are, are pretty you, cool. You know me. I love I love animal meeples. I love cute critters. I love you know. It's got really great artwork as well. It's just it's yeah. right down my alley. You know what else you like? Uniformity in your board game size box dimensions. And this that this company so far they're all the same. So I know you love they, that. <laughs> they're mostly the same. They're all the same width. Um, Facilis is a little bit uh, deeper than the others, and actually, now that I'm looking at a creature comfort, oh, okay, is a little, yeah. So, but they're all you know the same width, which is fine. They don't need to be the exact that's same box. But yeah, that's that's always a bonus. Also, I totally forgot to mention this, and I don't have a picture of it either. But the game, the Kickstarter edition, has game trays, like from Game Trays with a Z, I think is the company. Right. That does. Yeah, yeah. But they have these inserts, and they're fantastic definitely a bonus so you know if you see this game you see the kickstarter edition you you like games like everdell which Mm. is featured as one of the cards one of the cards is like a board game and it's just it's a picture of like everdell which is amazing Mm. nice nice i love stuff like that yeah and that's not even the same company so that's that's really cool on to the big old number two (laughs) (laughs) number three technically well, that's true. Isle, yeah, of cats. Number three. Isle of Cats. So Isle of Cats, the uh, base game came out, I believe, in 2019. And that was also a Kickstarter. Uh, I remember that specifically because I did not back it. But I was gifted a copy I back by two someone very, very generous, which was I was like, this polyominoes and kitty cats? Uh, I gotta get two of these. I'll give one to someone. <laughs> so that game already has a lot going on. That box is pretty large. Now, this campaign, I will say, had, like many Kickstarters, different pledge levels. Uh, you and I did not do the same exact level here. You went for the big box, right? By you, that thing is let's just specify. You. This is Melissa. My uh, wife backed this. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm all for it, sort of. We'll get to that. But, uh, well, yeah, 
I was going to say, this is a game that you have warmed up to and started off kind of like kind of cool on over the the base game. I was super. So I I backed the base game. I was super excited about the base game. It's got cats. It's polyomino tiles. Like, this is amazing. And we played it, and I soured on it pretty quickly. I thought there was uh, certain lesson cards that you could get that were not game-breaking, but like you have like this huge advantage by you know being able to get all these points i i got like so many points just because i had a whole bunch of treasures and like you know by the end of the game you know i got like a 30 point advantage you know like just from having all these treasures and having this one card that gave me all these points for them right and while i won the game i didn't like that i didn't like the feeling that like i can do this and this can happen to me and so we played it a couple of times and I kind of got the same impression one time there's like a, a a free basket for the rest of the game card and my wife got that in the first round and i was like i have to pay for my baskets now <laughs> i gotta waste money and time and cards on it okay yeah, yeah. but then the most recent time we played we ended up playing like the family version with different mm-hmm. lesson cards and they're not all out like that and I liked it a lot more. So that's how we've played it the last few times. So I've started to warm up to it and, and start to appreciate it again after my initial like excitement and then kind of let down. Right, right. And and most of the new stuff from this Kickstarter can also be incorporated into the family mode as well. Right, right. Um, so let's get right into the, the nitty gritty of it here. So basically there's, there's three different pieces that I got. Okay, and then we'll get to some of the extra stuff too. But basically, in this trio, you have a boat pack, um, a the main kind of name of the campaign, the kittens and beasts part, and then a Kickstarter exclusive bonus box full of a couple of extra things for everything that we just mentioned. Um, basically, the boat pack. I, I would say out of these things is the simplest. It, it adds, you know, the least amount of, of complexity to the game. And that's because it's essentially just different uh, boat boards that you can play with. So here's Eric's collection. This is everything out here with his... Uh, with the inserts. Custom, with the inserts and stuff like that. This is the mega, mega, mega box. Yeah. The boats specifically have all these different shapes now, and this is just one of them that I have a photograph of. But there's a bunch of other ones that, as opposed to the original game, which were all the same shape of boat, the layouts were a little bit different. But these are, like, literally have different shapes to them. So this definitely changes the strategy, especially starting off and where you're going to go and which rooms you think you might be able to complete. Uh, and plus, the artwork is different on all of them, which I, I appreciate. It's pretty cool. Uh, to the point where this one even has a giant water wheel right in the middle of the boat, uh, which doesn't have spaces on it, but but you know takes up a little bit of space, which is uh, actually kind of a good thing, I think. Um, yeah. Have you guys explored many of these different boats yet, or do you have a favorite? I don't have a favorite in the boats. No, we have not. We have not explored that. Are the boats on the back of it, are they all the same? I, I believe so, because the they, they also came with these reference cards of the boats that show you the room outlines, because it can be a little tricky sometimes on the board itself, because it's not super, it's not like colored like this. And on these, the backs are all the same, and the other side are the unique ones. So mm. I don't know the answer to that, but I'm guessing because these are like that, that maybe those are like that too. Gotcha. Um, so you could have just gotten, I believe, you could have just gotten this boat pack if you wanted to pledge at that level, or even afterwards, probably pick that specifically. Uh, but that's basically the boat pack. There's not much else to it other than that. A little bit of a different artwork there, which is cool. Yeah. Then the second one was uh, got... kittens and beasts. Now that one, yes, we have played with multiple times. And okay. more than likely, we'll never play this game without the kittens because I can see it that. just adds two tiny little kittens that are like, you know, one or two, maybe three, but I think just one or I two. I think it's squares. one, two, or three. 
I think yeah, it, it could be. So they're, they're real tiny, but it's two different color cats and you get both of them and they're just going to add to mm-hmm. two different families and give you more points. So whenever I see a card that has like the two tiny kittens, yeah, I'm going for that. Yeah, for sure. And and yeah. in your in this sort of spatial puzzle that you're doing on these boards, there inevitably comes a time where you're like, oh man, I wish there was a tile that was a little bit smaller because it would yeah. fit right here in this spot. And you know, now that can happen. It's not always going to happen, but the potential is there. And I mean, let's be honest, they're adorable, right? This yeah. very, very cute. Now so in this, this picture, yeah, um, go ahead. You, there are a couple of beasts being shown. Um, the, mo- the, the front right, there's that yellow lizard looking thing. And right. he's got, so you can see how there's a green symbol in the top right, and there's a blue symbol in the top left, and then there's a purple symbol in the bottom right. So those are all cat symbols. And if you put a green cat next to the green symbol and make that into a family, you get a bonus. And the blue, so you can get this, you get this right at the beginning. If you play with the beast expansion, you get just randomly one of these right at the beginning and you put it somewhere in your boat and you want to try and have, you know, the the color of the cat line up with where the cat is featured on the board so that, you know, you can Mm -hmm. just have this one kind family if you need to. And it's cool. It doesn't add much. It just adds a little bit, just something different for startup. And we'll probably continue to play with this one every time we play this game as well. Yeah, definitely. And I should point out that, so the three of these are are all modular. You can play with one, two, or three of them. And the rule book even goes as far as to tell you that the kittens part is the easy thing to implement because it is just extra tiles. The beasts are kind of a medium complexity. And then the blue bag there, the last thing that you can add are these events which greatly impact, you know, the way you're going to do some things. And, and they build this as the most complex of the three. This right. one, have, the events, you cannot play with the family uh, version. Yeah, we haven't played with the events yet. Yeah, I, I totally agree with your, your you know, diagnosis there that those two can always be part of this game now yeah. without having to, to be taken out. I mean, I already put the cards are already shuffled in anyway to other yeah. extra cards they come with other cards as well i should add <laughs> now um, just so you're Scott. aware so the box that this game comes in because you were you were asking mm-hmm. if dead reckoning was the same size this is the box so you mm-hmm. basically have this i don't know regular size like maybe ticket to ride maybe a little bit thinner than ticket to ride bottom portion and then the top portion, which is actually this is this is the the top from the base game, which they said to use. I don't understand why, because the top from the new Kickstarter edition is the same size. It's still got you know the huh. little kitty target, so the cat can sit in the box too. That's weird. Did you find it yeah. harder to take it off or put it back on? Is that why? No, nope. like a weird. We size have no thing? idea why. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, let us know in the comments below if you have any insight into this Isle of Cats mystery. We would love Please to Please do. So one other thing real quick I want to point out. That other box was basically a, a Kickstarter exclusive bonus stuff. So these are things that you would only get if you had backed this recent campaign. And uh, the biggest difference here is that there are upgraded beast meeples or beast tokens. So here on the left are the the standard ones that would come with the game, I guess later on retail version, and the right are the Kickstarter ones. And these are the tokens you'll put on your game board when you make that uh, friendship that Eric was talking about between the beast and the colored cat family that corresponds there. You just put one of these tokens on to show that that friendship was made, and then it's going to score you points at the end of the game. It doesn't matter which one of these you put. They're just for you know aesthetic choice. They don't have to match the color of the beast or the cat family or anything like that. But, man, these Kickstarter ones look really, really cool. And, and the base Kickstarter game from the first game had these upgraded ones for cat tokens as well. And it's amazing. Just by adding a second color to these tokens really makes them look a lot cooler. And, uh, and they're a little bit bigger, too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and there, there's some, some nice colors that really make them pop you know that that like lizard thing the second one that kind of looks like a dragon axolotl you know yeah. that, like <laughs> blue and that like kind of like magenta like bright magenta that that pops the one yep. underneath that looks like a dog with purple legs yeah These are, yeah it's I, mean, I, I, find, I find the top one to be a little weird looking 
like the the brown and is that your least green. favorite? The color know. combination or the the shape? Both. I mean, the shape I guess is fine, okay. but the color combination I, I can't really tell what that is. You know, and then the bear down the bottom with the bunny ears is kind of silly. <laughs> He's a bunny bear. Yep. All right, so that is uh, a lot of what comes with the Isle of Cats recent Kickstarter. But wait, there's more. So the other thing that you could get with the Isle of Cats expansion was Isle of Cats Explore and Draw, which Ah. is the flip and write version of Isle of Cats. And, and this is technically a standalone game, so this is a fourth game on the video. Yep. So this is, again, this is the flip and write version of Isle of Cats. The main difference is that instead of like drafting cards and then, you know, playing your card, you're going to put these 12 cards into a grid like that. And on your turn, you're going to choose a column. And you're just going to take three cards, mm-hmm. you know, top, bottom, or top, middle, and bottom from one of these four columns. And that's your turn. And everybody can choose the same column or they don't have to. And you also have like little powers that you can do. There's, uh, you, you can't see it that well, but on the on the board that has the ship to the left on the bottom, <clears throat> there's five mm-hmm. different powers. You're allowed to use three of them one time in the game. So there's seven rounds. If you don't use one in the first few rounds, make sure you use them by the last three. And they'll, they'll do things right. like allow you to pick one from each row so instead of just doing you know or picking a column you can pick one from the top anywhere one from the middle anywhere one from the bottom one of them will allow you to take a a row instead of a column and just Mm -hmm. and things like that and otherwise you're playing the game and it's it's a lot of fun this is one of my favorite flipping rights i I know it's still new so it's kind of cool to the new but every and everything but i really like this (laughs) it it kind of fixes that main problem that i had with the base game Isle of Cats before the expansion where sure, sure. you could get a lesson card that oh, now you're, you know that you're going to get like 20 points at the end of the game and just have this huge advantage over everybody else. In this one, if you don't get a lesson card, that's really good. You didn't have the foresight to get it. It was available to you. That's, you know, that's right. on you. And that's much, that's much better for me. Yeah. I, I would rather have the option and blow it and lose rather than be like, oh my God, you had all these good cards. And like I'm over here collecting a right. bunch of half baskets and shoes and you're over <laughs> here like keeping all the good stuff. Ugh. It's rough. <laughs> I have I have half a shoe <laughs> and a broken <laughs> basket. Uh no, but to to Eric's point, you know, this definitely evens the playing field a little bit. Uh, I mean there's still strategy, obviously, but it is yeah. a little less brain burning for that reason too. And and you're not taking these from anybody, right? So uh, Eric, I think you did mention this, but if you decide to take the second row or second column, I can also do that. You're not physically picking these cards up, you're just drawing the shapes that are on there onto your board. And not pictured here is the separate lesson board. So right. the way the lessons work in this version of the game is that if you choose a column that's got one of those lessons, you have this side card with a list of all the lessons, and you just check it off when you pick that one. And yep. so the reference is right there. You don't have to remember what it does or look back at the card. All the lessons are on that sheet. And uh, they're all numbered. Like one and, through and they're all 20. numbered, exactly. So we were able to pull this off over Zoom, um, and it was mostly because of that, right? Because... If the lessons weren't that easy to to identify with the numbers like that, it'd be a little bit of an extra effort, right? Like you have to like read it to us and we'd have right. to like remember what it was. But just oh, it's what is that number five? Got it. And that's it. Yeah. So yeah, this, I, is, this is an implementation that uh that was really successful, I think. This was and now again, I can't speak for dead reckoning yet, but this was an amazing Kickstarter day. That's you know, that, that's, that's Dead Reckoning, like a pirate game that I'm super excited for. Isle of Cats, a game that I was really excited for. And then I would kind of fell off. And then I started gradually coming back, you know, and then a new Kickstarter coming out. It's only going to make things better, especially with the kittens. And now the rolling right and Creature Comforts just came in the mail the other day and I got to play that. Happy Kickstarter Day, everybody. Happy Kickstarter Day. Folks, let us know 
in the comments if you have any of these Kickstarters that we mentioned, possibly you backed and you've gotten them to the table so far, or maybe some other Kickstarters that you got that we did not mention, because there are a bunch. Yeah, I want to hear about that Reckoning specifically. Mm. It's it's a pretty involved, pretty complicated game. It's going to be... It's going to be intimidating to get to the table and learn. This is going to be a, a multi, multi-hour event. Yeah. Just That's opening weekend. it, going through everything, reading the directions, trying to figure it out, the first playthrough and setting it up. So this might and then not making get Melissa read the directions. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. I'll watch the video. She'll read the directions. But, yeah. So that's it, folks. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, as always. We love to hear from you, so let us know in the comments below what's going on. Eric, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Nope. I already said happy Happy. Kickstarter Day. Don't 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 mouth the words to me. I know. Listen, it's been a while. Okay, we're a little bit out of practice. I I, I forget how to do the sign off. It's been like a month since we did a recording, right? No, 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 not a. Uh, oh well, since we re- recorded yeah. something, yeah, maybe since the video came out, this is still our longest uh, right. dry streak because it's at this point it's been over two weeks. So life, Kid. you all know, you all Kids. know, kids. <laughs> all right, folks, that's it. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good night. Bye.